So by bringing Makuta online, we were able to provide an alternative source of, of those magnet and heavy rare earths going forward. Um, beyond Makutu and producing a mixed rare earth carbonate product at Makutu. We are uh, exploring developing our own refinery, uh, but in parallel to that, we're, we're in discussions with a number of different parties with regards to working together. Hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today I'm joined once again by Tim Harrison, who is Managing Director of Ionic Rare Earths. Ionic are looking to become a vertically integrated player in the rare earth element supply chain. Tim, uh, great to see you today, sitting there in amongst the wind turbines out at sea, I see. That's right, Leo. Um, so these things are powered by, you know, delivered by the fact of uh, supply chain of NDPR, but, but dysprosium and terbium are absolutely critical for these things. Absolutely. The company um, uh, sort of based around the Makutu project, focused on the Makutu project in Uganda, uh, Ionic uh, Adsorption Clay Deposit. Tell us a little bit about um, the, the, the deposit there and the, the resource you've, you've uh, delineated. Um, so, yeah, Makutu um, is a large ionic adsorption clay located about 120 kilometres east of Kampala in Uganda. Um, we've defined a, a mineral resource estimate of over 500 million tonnes. Um, and uh, from that, we expect to be able to develop a low capital modular project uh, with a very long life, uh, potentially exceeding 50 years. Um, with, you know, a lot of exploration upside still to be delivered. So, um, yeah, fantastic asset and a platform for us to, to really develop that, uh, that total magnet and heavy rare earth supply chain. Mm. And you, the pro project's moving forward. You, I understand you've been doing the uh, environmental and social impact assessment and having some hearings with local stakeholders. How's that been going? Yeah, so we had tremendous support um, in August when we had our public hearings. We've had great buy-in from stakeholders in Uganda uh, we had over 3,800 local stakeholders attend um, the two hearings and, uh, and I think around 65,000 uh, live Twitter feed uh, attendees. So, yeah, tremendous interest in the project, a lot of support and, and very keen to see Makutu move from exploration project now to, you know, a development and, and, and you know, hopefully in the near term, a, an operating mine. And so, Tim, what, what are the timelines for completing this environmental and social impact assessment? Yeah, so uh, we submitted the, the documentation back in December uh, last year. We've been working through the process and we're expecting the formal award uh, from Uganda's National Environmental Management Authority, uh, Authority imminently. Um, so uh, with that, we'll have, um, you know, a, a significant piece of, of what we need to, to, to finalise uh, our mining lease application, which we've got underway now at, at Makutu. Mm. And in terms of sort of local infrastructure, what's there already in place? So um, as far as infrastructure, I mean, we've got um, hydroelectric power and transmission lines running immediately adjacent to where we propose to put the plant, um, roads, rail, um, mobile phone communications, everything's immediately accessible to the project. So that's going to afford us the ability to move very quickly in developing Makutu in a low capital modular um, development approach. Mm, excellent. Um, let's talk a little bit about the, the rare earth supply chain. Obviously, you know, well known that it's, it's dominated by, by China in terms of the, the, both the mining and the processing. Um, where do you hope to fit into this, into this supply chain? Well, obviously, um, with Makutu uh, being an ionic adsorption clay, these are very rare assets um, and um, you know, very difficult to find outside of southern China and Myanmar. Um, we know that um, China uh, and Myanmar produce over 95% of the world's heavy rare earths, um, specifically dysprosium and terbium from assets like this. So by bringing Makutu online, we were able to provide an alternative source of, of those magnet and heavy rare earths going forward. Um, beyond Makutu and producing a mixed rare earth carbonate product at Makutu, we are uh, exploring developing our own refinery uh, but in parallel to that, we're, we're in discussions with a number of different parties with regards to working together and collaborating on, on refining capability. But beyond that, you know, the requirement to develop metal making, alloy making, magnet making are all milestones that, that, that also need to be progressed because um, there's no point producing oxides 
uh, or products that then have to go back into existing supply chains. We want to work with partners to build those new blocks, those new value addition uh, steps um, so that we can actually look at, at helping build that, that alternative supply chain long term. Hmm. I mean, you, you mentioned there dysprosium and terbium. We hear a lot about uh, neodymium um, in, in, in uh, you know, high strength magnets, permanent magnets. Um, where do dysprosium and terbium fit in? And, and what is the outlook for the supply of those, those elements? Well, I mean, interestingly enough, um, you know, NDPR, so um, they talked about, you know, a lot by, by you know, our, our peers in the, in the rare earth space. Um, but the reality is that you need the dysprosium and terbium in order to make the magnets that operate at high temperature. If you, have, um, if you don't have the DYTB in the magnets, then the magnets start to demagnetize at much lower temperatures. So if you're looking at developing offshore wind turbines or EV motors that operate at high temperature, high efficient magnets, you need to incorporate uh, anywhere from 10 to 15% of the rare earth elemental con uh, content uh, coming from either DY or TB. So it enables the magnets to operate at high temperature and retain that, that magnetic uh, property. Mm. And so in terms of the deficit coming in those metals, you know, how is that, what's, what's that forecast to be and where does Ionic fit in? So um, if we look at some of the projections at the moment, you know, we're looking at um, DYTB being in deficit now. Um, so there's not enough DYTB currently being mined, um, processed um, and made available to, to satisfy requirements at the moment, which would suggest that, that stockpiles are being eaten into. Um, and for neodymium and praseodymium, you know, forecasts are that, that next year um, that's in deficit. So, you know, I think we're at the precipice now where supply is nowhere, is not keeping up with the demand and with the demand continuing to increase at quite a significant amount as the world adopts more EVs and looks at rolling out more offshore wind farms, um, you know, I think there's a, there's a big problem, there's a big issue coming that there's simply not those projects coming online. For Makutu, for Ionic, um, with our, our, our Makutu project, but also looking at re recycling, it provides a great opportunity for us to start filling a portion of that void you know, by no means can we do that alone. It's going to require a number of different projects to, to come online. It requires the right projects coming on with the right rare earth elements. And, uh, you know, I suppose we're fortunate with Makutu that it, it, ticks, it ticks those boxes. Mm. You're also getting into the recycling um, business. Tell us a little bit about uh, your acquisition of Seren Technologies and, and how that company is going to be fitted into Ionic. Okay, so um, earlier this year, we completed the, the acquisition of, uh, of Seren Technologies. We've been working through that, uh, that process um, from uh, the start of this year. We finalised the acquisition in April. Uh, we've recently been awarded a, a significant grant um, from the UK government, from the uh, Advanced Propulsion Centre, um, to develop a demonstration plant where we'll recycle um, 30 tonnes of magnets and produce 10 tonnes of individually separated rare earth oxides. So, um, you know, a great opportunity for us to, to, to look at developing commercial, working towards commercialising the technology, a technology that provides a step change on, on everything else in the space at the moment in that we can provide the individual separated rare earth oxides from variable feed quality um, to make the products that we can then work with supply chain partners on making the high intensity magnets uh, with varying quantities of DYTB uh, going forward. So, um, yeah, great opportunity for the company to move forward with the, with the demonstration plant, which we hope to have operational in Belfast in the first half of next year. Mm. Um, and the recycling currently dominated by China, yeah? That's right. So um, when we look at the recycling landscape at the moment, um, it is dominated by China, uh, roughly uh, in excess of 99% of the current magnet rare earth recycling um, is controlled by China. Uh, and when we look at the, the proportion that, that magnet recycling makes up of the total supply of, of magnet rare earths, you know, data suggests it's around about 40% of the total market. So, you know, we think we're in a great opportunity to take advantage of, of the technology um, moving forward and, and being able to commercialise that. And with that, you know, we're also looking at, at changing the name 
of, of Seren Technologies. We're, we're, we're rebranding at Ionic Technologies. Um, and that, that will provide now a footprint for us to, to start looking at commercialising that technology with a, with a, you know, a, global, uh, a global footprint. Mm. Busy time for the company. And what, what are your sort of key, key milestones for the rest of the year? So this year, big focus is really around uh, working towards the mining licence, uh, mining lease application at Makutu and having that completed um, by the end of October. Uh, and then beyond that, um, obviously, we've got pilot plant activities happening with, with Ionic Technologies, setting up our new facility in Belfast. And uh, beyond that, we continue to work with a, a, you know, a varying number of, of potential strategic partners and supply chain partners on starting to, to work towards building the framework and the building blocks um, to work towards building that alternative supply chain. So, you know, a lot going on, um, very exciting space um, uh, at the moment with, uh, with regards to, you know, the, the looming demand for, for magnet rare earths. Excellent. A busy few months ahead. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tim, for that update on Ionic Rare Earths.